Hi everyone, this is Charan here. Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we are going to see about market basket analysis. Market basket analysis is based on the method called as association rule mining, which is implemented using the a priori algorithm. So this is a rule based technique. It helps to identify the various patterns that is present in the data set. It helps to identify the relationship between different attributes that is present in the data set. So this algorithm is commonly applied to a data set that looks similar to the grocery data set. When I say a grocery data set, what happens is we have an user, we have H number of users, and we have a number of items that are bought by these users. So what we try to do is we try to understand if there is any pattern in the items that are bought by the users. The market basket analysis can be broadly classified into two different categories. One is predictive, the other is differential. When I say predictive, it means that we are trying to predict whether there is any pattern in the data set. Users who buys an item A, uh, are they more likely to buy item B? Users who buy bread, are they more likely to buy jam or butter? So this is predictive use case. We want to identify the various insights. What is What are all the various items that are more likely to be bought by the users uh, right, together? On the other case, like on the other hand, what we have is differential use case. Like in case of differential use case, we try to understand why certain thing is not happening, let's say in a particular physical store. Let's say we have 10 different stores and nine of those 10 stores shows an rule like users who buy bread are more likely to buy butter or jam. So we have this one particular store which is not exhibiting this particular rule. So what we do is in case of differential use case, we try to understand the difference like, uh, and see what is happening that is not exactly allowing this particular rule to be seen in this particular store. So is it because like, the butter and jam is not available in the store? Is it because it is being displayed in a different area? Maybe is it because it's not visible to the customers who are buying like bread? So we try to understand what is happening exactly in this particular one store that is not in line with the other one. That is the differential analysis. So market best analysis is commonly used to increase the sales at both in the physical store as well as the online store. Some of the common use cases of market basket analysis are like changing the physical layout of a store, changing like the uh, the design of the website, like how the items should be arranged together, what are all the different items that should be shown to the user, like together in a particular page. When we have, when we like to have a website, like we have a very limited real estate. So when a user is looking for a particular item, how best should we utilize the uh, real estate? So it should be dynamic, depending upon what the user is looking for, the other items should be dynamically populated. And in order to do that, we need algorithms such as like a priori algorithm, like based on the market basket analysis. The other use case is the marketing campaigns. So we send out the campaigns to various users, like very like various companies send out marketing campaigns to various users based on the items that the user is looking for or the, based on the items that the user has uh, bought already. So we use the a priori algorithm like uh, in order to generate better marketing campaigns that allows the user like to make more purchases. So these are all some of the common use cases for uh, market best analysis. Of course, this can be applied to various various other industries as well. Like wherever like the data set is very similar to a grocery kind of a data set. Moving on to the next one, how the association rule mining is applied in the real life use cases. As you see on my screen, what I was doing was like searching for a 4K camera. So I was browsing and then looking for uh, like few selective models. And here are some of the recommendations that were produced by the Amazon website. The top one here, or the recommendation based on the association rule mining. So what it does is it identifies like various items that I'm looking for and it tries to get all the other related items like similar to the item that I'm looking for. Similar to the item that I have been searching for. In the bottom on the other end, it's based on the recommendation system. What it does is it identifies like other similar users and then sees what are all the other similar users have been looking for. And it produces those uh, uh, cameras as a suggestion for me. So these are all like some of the real life use cases, how it is being used. So this helps in improving these sales. So if you read about the Amazon uh, uh, case study about how the recommendation system helped in improving their sales by over 40%, you will understand like how important all these recommendations are. 
So a priori algorithm, right? The market-based analysis plays a very critical role in helping the organization to improve the sale, in improving the cross selling. Moving on to the next one, what is exactly a priori algorithm? We don't know market-based analysis uses the a priori algorithm, but what is it? How it works? Like a priori algorithm first identifies like various frequent items that are present in the data. Then what happens is it identifies the association between the different items based on support, confidence, as well as lift. So for example, let's say uh, there are two items, item A and item B. We want to understand the relationship between the item A as well as item B, whether the users who buy item A, are they more likely to buy item B or not? So what we need is we need support, confidence, as well as lift in order to identify these kind of insights. So what is support? Support is like it defines how popular an item is. For example, when we say support of A, it means like it means that out of all the transaction in how many transaction do like item A appear? Support of item B would be out of its number of transaction in the data set like how many transaction like item B appear. So confidence is how likely a customer is uh, likely to buy an item B when he buys an item A. So that is confidence of uh, A and B. So how likely is the customer is going to buy the item B when he is to, when he is already bought the item A? So depending upon that, maybe we can think about like uh, keeping both those uh, items like together in a particular uh, place. In case of physical store, we can we can decide whether they should be placed in the same shelf or not. The third one is lift. So the difference between the confidence as well as lift is like the popularity of the second item comes into the picture in case of lift. For example, let's say uh, we assume that the, the customers who buy item A are most likely buying the item B. That would be an issue in this particular assumption. What happens if uh, like most of the customer are anyway going to buy the item B? So we would be getting a higher confidence saying that customer who bought A are most likely to buy B. But the truth is like anyway, most customers are buying the item B. So there is no pattern as such. So these uh, kind of issues can be eliminated when we have lift in place. So what happens is lift also considers the popularity of the item B. So if the item B is already popular, so then it will not be coming up in our recommendation like the lift score would be much lower and hence like it will be eliminated from the recommendation. So these are all the three critical parameters that are used in order to come up with uh, like uh, and in order to come up with like various rules or various patterns that is present in the data set. So moving on to an, a very simple example, like as you see on my screen, what we have is we have a simple example of 100 transactions of various customers. And what we have is we have about 20, no, 20 transactions uh, which has the item bread. And we have 15 transactions with the item butter and we have 10 transactions with items both bread as well as butter. So we want to identify how likely a customer is going to buy butter when he's buying the item bread. So this is what we are trying to identify. So now what we need to do is we need to identify the support. So support for bread is like bread appears in 20 transaction. Total number of transaction is 100. So what we do is number of transactions where bread appears divided by the total number of transaction, which is 20 by 100 and it's, uh, it is 0.2. Similarly for support for butter would be 0.15 and support for bread and butter would be 0.1. So once we have identified the support for all these three combination, so then what we do is we identify the confidence. So when I say confidence, what we are trying to do is how likely the customer is going to buy butter when he has already bought bread. So for that, what we do is we do the support of bread and butter divided by support of bread. So here we know that the values have already been calculated. So 0.1 divided by 0.2, which is like 0.5. So here this confidence for bread and butter is 0.5. So now what we are going to do is we are going to identify the lift. So here in case of lift, as I explained, what we are trying to do is we are going to bring in the popularity of the second item as well. So 
in case of uh, like on top of the confidence formula what we are going to do is in the denominator we are going to multiply the support of bread with the support of the second item in this case it is the butter so what we do is support of bread and butter in the numerator in the denominator we have support of bread multiplied by support of butter so when we do this what we get is we get a value of 3.333 so in general, what we need to do, we need to have is we need to have a lift value above one. So if we have a lift value above one, it means that it is showing a significant, uh, significant like a pattern or significant impact. If we have a lift which is less than one percent, which means that it is not showing any significance. So they should be eliminated. Moving on to the next one, what are all the various steps that are involved in an a priori algorithm? The first step in an a priori algorithm is to identify the support for all the items that is present in the data set. We need to identify the popularity score for all the items. After identifying the support for all the items, then we what we do is we identify, we come up with a minimum threshold for both support as well as confidence. The third step is filter all the items that surpasses the minimum support that we have defined. So then the fourth step is after filtering all the items that surpasses the minimum support, we come up with the various association that crosses the minimum confidence that we have set. And the last step is sorting all the rules based on the lift store that we have got. So these are all the various steps that are involved in the a priori algorithm. So this will be able to show us all the frequent rules or frequent patterns that are present in the data set. Coming to the next part, what are the various issues that are present in the a priori algorithm? One common issue of a priori algorithm is it needs to scan the DB multiple times, which means that it is computationally very intense. It will not be practically possible to use a priori algorithm across a data set which is quite large. So how do we manage it? How can we improve the performance of the algorithm? How can we use the a priori algorithm even if the data set is quite large? If we take Amazon as an example, like it is quite large, it has a large number of items. How to make use uh, of a priori algorithm in such an uh, a scenario when we have an extremely large number of use cases? There are a few techniques that can help in optimizing the a priori algorithm when we have an extremely large data set. They are, first one is, reduce the number of transactions that we are going to use to identify the patterns. So what you do is instead of passing on the entire transaction, you limit the number of transactions. How can we limit the number of transactions? Let's say there are few users who have bought only few items or who have viewed only few items. So then what we can do is we can straight away remove those uh, users because they anyway don't have much data uh, for us to analyze. So what we can do is we can set a minimum threshold. If it, we have the data of a physical store, what we can do is we can set what should be the minimum number of items that an user should have bought in a particular transaction for us to consider that particular transaction. So what when we do this kind of filtering, what happens is we end up only with the transaction that has like a, a good amount of information we would be able to eliminate a lot uh, a large number of small transaction which anyway doesn't have any useful information the second one is setting and higher support as well as confidence threshold when we come up with the thresholds we need to ensure that we have a higher threshold if we have a very low threshold then what happens is the algorithm would have to like to scan through the DB multiple times and then it will be very time consuming. We should set a higher threshold because anyway we are interested only in the items that are like most frequently occurring. So all the items which are not frequent enough we are okay those for those items to be eliminated. The final one is partitioning the data. When we have extremely large data set, we can think about different ways of partitioning the data. Maybe uh, all the items that are related to a certain category. For example, all toys related items can be partitioned into a separate data. All uh, stationary items can be partitioned into a separate data set. And then we can identify like what are all the various items within the stationary category to see like, how they should be sorted out. Coming to the last part of the session today, what are all the various advantages and disadvantages of uh, the market basket analysis? The advantage of market basket analysis is it is very easy to implement and it is very easy to interpret. The rules that we are 
able to extract from the data set will be very much straightforward it should be like a very easy to take it forward to the business stakeholders and uh, it will be very easy to explain these uh, data set as well as these rules on the other hand that some of the disadvantages of a priori algorithm is it is very time consuming and it is not efficient when we have an extremely large data set so that's it about the Martin Bastard analysis uh, using the a priori algorithm if you are interested to learn more about the a priori algorithm I will be attaching some of the references in the description. You can go through those references to better understand how it works and uh, um, other uh, grand other details about this particular algorithm. In the next session, I will be taking you through the implementation of the a priori algorithm in order to perform the market basket analysis. And uh, that's it for now. If you like what I'm doing here, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you know anyone is interested in learning data science, uh, share the uh, learning data science in 100 day series with them. See you in the next session. Bye until then.